get right into it. Uh, I tried to lobby Drew for a little bit more time tonight, but he was a stickler about it. So uh, we're going to talk a little tackling tonight. Um, obviously, everybody's going to practice tackling and do all that. Three ways that we break it down at Temple are pursuit, block destruction, and, and then obviously working the finish with the tackle. I'm not going to talk pursuit or block destruction there. Um, when you're doing pursuit, you know, one quick note is find a way to make it accountable and hold guys accountable to it and then block destruction. I think a lot starts and stops in just being really violent with your hands and finding ways to practice that. And for us, it's recruiting tough guys. Uh, for you, it's making them as, as tough as you can make them. And when you get into the tackle, I know there's a lot of information out there, guys, about, you know, the contact and the finish. And I'm a subscriber to a lot of that stuff, whether it's the Hawk tackle, you know, whatever you guys are into that way, great. I think you got to name every baby that way. Um, so you can evaluate it and teach it. But what we're going to talk most about tonight is right here, the, the approach. And two uh, drills that I termed outside lane of traffic and, and a warp pipe banana. So that's where we're going to spend all of our time uh, tonight. Two visuals, right? Uh, if you guys don't know what that green thing on the right, you never played Mario, you haven't lived. Um, but essentially, once you enter that warp pipe, there's no way you can go other than out the other side. And a lot of guys, you know, talk about a banana path or a J path. Uh, we're talking the same thing there. And then the lane of traffic, just two visuals for our guys to do it. And then I just made this graphic kind of to illustrate a uh, situation that this will come up in. You know, so our apex defender is going to, you know, we're going to want him taking that outside lane, forcing the ball carrier to stay on that lane. So they meet at a good junction point and he doesn't negate the leverage or the rest of our pursuit. On the practice field, this is how we set it up. Uh, obviously, the purple line is a sideline. These are college dimensions, so it's going to be a little bit different for you guys. A lot of our practice fields are going to have this uh, red line here, which is a five-yard mark off of the sideline. So really what you need to see out of this is just the simple five-by-five five box. We don't do it with any cones or anything. I just tell the ball carriers, hey, jump on the 35. Defender, jump on, uh, on the 30 at the red line. And let's, let's play ball. So that's the setup. Coaching points for, again, I'm going to buzz through these pretty quick. I can email these slides out if you guys want. But, again, I want to get through this a uh, bunch of good information here if we can. Stay square. That's a big one. Um, obviously, we want good posture with the – I call it a hunt position, but just uh, chest down, uh, over the toes, all that good stuff. And our inside foot and our inside shoulder are really the points that we want to focus on when we're doing this drill. So that inside foot, the next bullet point is going to stay right on that center line as that defender is approaching. And so his outside foot is going to be tracking right there as far as the feet in the sand. So really focused on that inside foot being right on the center line and then really thinking about striking on his inside shoulder. Um, you know, you could debate the vernacular of it, but a lot of people talk, and I've used it too, where, hey, keep your outside arm free. Um, I actually try to get those guys to think more about what they're going to use as their weapon. You know, where, where are they going to be making contacts? What we try to stress is just, hey, you're going to hit the football with your inside shoulder as this drill's laid out on his right shoulder. And then run low and attack. Uh, I don't coach the footwork a lot in this, and so we'll see that in the film, uh, but want those guys in attack mentality. I mean, making a one-on-one -on -one tackle's hard enough. Don't want them slowed down. Don't want them shimmying, breaking down, any of that. We're going to run an attack in both of the angles that we're going to talk about today. Common mistakes, and I got some uh, bad um, film on here too, so we'll, uh, you know, we'll be transparent in all this. Uh, guys turn their shoulders inside. So what I don't, you know, we want them staying square, shoulders oriented like this. When they approach that and turn their shoulders like that, well, they negated uh, one of two ways. They negated their leverage by turning this thing into a true one-on-one. -on -one. They lost all their outside leverage by turning and facing the dude. or they approach this thing on an inside lane of traffic. Obviously, that's going to invite the ball carry to bounce this thing. Uh, also something that we won't, don't want our apex or perimeter guys doing. Um, as they approach, you, some guys will swing their feet outside and take it too wide, making it too easy for the ball carry to cut. And then lastly, they're going to shimmy or break down. And, and in practice, we're really going to stress that those guys really, really run an attack. Uh, variations of this drill, make it a bigger box. When you break down film and watch it, your back seven guys, a lot, a lot of times, you're going to be able to pause the film and find these five to 10 yard boxes where they have a 45 degree angle coming outside in and, and they're not uh, breaking the egg the way they need to. The other way that, that we'll do this here is, is actually at a warp pipe. So this is more for safeties and sometimes corners where, hey, you got to get down towards the line of scrimmage first. You got to close some space. 
and then find your outside lane of traffic as you're going. So that's just two variations on the drill. I'm gonna see if I can optimize the film here. Um, so this doesn't uh, get too choppy. I know sometimes that happens here. So we, again, we just set this right up off the sideline. We're gonna be looking at number 16 here on the, at the bottom or the middle of the screen there. He does a really nice job of this. Again, you're gonna look at his left foot. He stays right on line to this thing. The only thing I tell the offensive scout players here is just, hey, attack right at him and then you choose, right? These guys are all, all athletes or should be unless you, we did a poor job recruiting them. You know, if he's got good leverage, put a foot in the ground and cut up field. If he tries to come inside, you bounce it on your own. I don't dictate in the, that in the drill, so the drill really runs pretty smoothly and we get a lot of reps at it. So as he goes to get this thing, uh, and, and, you know, with today's day and age with all the non-contact deal stuff, we don't do this drill with a lot of, a lot of thud to it. So every once in a while, we'll have those guys thud, but, you know, we'll trace that back. You can just watch his inside foot stay on a really, really pure path as he approaches that dude. And that guy's got one way to go, and that's to cut this up. You know, no thud or anything like that. We're usually just pinning the hip. Uh, we'll do this without shoulder pads a lot of times. This next rep now, this kid's not a great player. And, and, and the one thing about these two drills as we get going, and I don't want to get lost on it, that one of the advantages of doing these two is you can really evaluate your guys and get them to see on film and understand too their limitations and and the, you know some guys going hey you can take a little bit more aggressive path our best tacklers are actually going to take an inside lane but they're going to stay square they're going to invite that dude to, to bounce outside but then they're just going to get vertical and knife them out so you know you can kind of tweak a little bit as how guys approach the ball but first uh you need a, a way to define it which we're going to obviously get into depth on in the next 10 minutes so you see him on this one, he takes it way too inside uh, of an angle there, and the guy tries to bounce it on him. Now, the one thing he does do a nice job of is he stays square. So he's got a fighting chance to redirect and still make an ankle tackle or wrap this thing up. So you see that kind of in two parts there. One, his posture is fine. His path is poor. And so, you know, the ball's carry is going to bounce, but because he stays square, he's got a chance to put a foot in the ground and go get the thing. Other variation of it here as we – film got away from me. I apologize. Back this up is uh, the big 10 yard box. So we'll just bounce this thing out, make this a 10 yard box and force those guys now to build on that fundamental. And hey, go close that speed the best you can or close that space, excuse me. And you get a feel for like, hey, what are you teaching from a, a run or anything like that? You know, we just say, hey, go. I don't do a ton of it. This turns into a, a crossover run with square shoulders. And then he kind of scallops right towards the finish. And then the ball carries tries to bounce. He's got good outside leverage. So he redirects and is going to just thud him up a little bit to finish. So as we get into some film here, we're going to look at the, the uh, nickel here, our outside linebacker set to the field. Uh, and this is not a good rep. So you see the ball cut back against him, and that five-yard box appear like I said it would. You know, a lot of times as an apex defender, you'll be able to find this, and, it's, and you'll see some clips of corners and safeties coming up here too. But there's the five-yard box, and right there, you already see his shoulders in poor position and his feet not oriented the way we want him to. So where's the ball carrier going to go? Everybody knows the answer to that. He's going to bounce that. He tries to redirect, and he's able to get a little bit of meat on that inside leg, but ultimately it's a missed tackle. And then the same thing, the outside guy almost does the same thing, but he at least had a better outside lane, even though his shoulders were turned in too. Next rep, same deal. Uh, UCF here and all their tempo madness. You're going to take a peek at the at the field backer again approaching the box against the cutback. And this is a really drastic one too. There's your five yard box as as he gets into it. And this is a really, really poor job, right? So the, the thing that we want our guys to understand is even though it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're never alone, right? You make yourself into a one-on-one -on -one if you negate the rest of the guys that are out there with you. So, you know, we just want to make him a little bit more square and, and not allow that ball to bounce and get out to the, out to the perimeter. So this next rep here is the, the still frame that I had at the beginning of this. So again, looking at the apex defender, he's going to hold a little bit on this one because we teach our guys, obviously with all the RPO games and things like that, we'll run a lot of quarters, but we'll, we'll do it out of a, uh, a, a front side fit to the, to the zone. And then we'll, we'll pause our, our backside guys a lot to hold for RPO. So that's what he's doing here. That's why he's not aggressively closing space. But he does a nice job of, of staying square, being patient, 
and putting a strike on the quarterback with his inside shoulder. So you just see the, the leverage difference there uh, for him on that rep and, and, and a really good one at that. And here's another good one now where they're going to motion in here and we get back into an apex. Again, still looking at the apex defender here to the field, but you're going to see him now. He's going to have to close some space in a hurry. So he gets himself in there, gets his shoulders uh, in a good position to, to strike the football. And again, that's why we, we, we talk a lot about trying to strike with our right shoulder. So, you know, when you pause it there, you get a feel for, hey, where those boxes show up, you know, how many times those guys are going to approach with a 45-degree angle. And we want to get ourselves there and then at the finish, get ourselves back and square a lot of times. Now, you're going to watch film and you, you'll see this stuff too. And you say, hey, well, coach, those guys aren't ultimately square. But I think stretching that to a degree in practice where you force them to really be square, at least they're not going to close themselves off and eliminate their hips from, from that ability to get vertical when the ball bounces. So I think that's a really critical posture thing um, when you're approaching that outside lane of traffic on this thing. So here's a clip. I believe this one's uh, of our boundary corner here. He's with the Minnesota Vikings. Now got drafted by those guys. I uh, hope he has a great career other than getting his ass beat by the Packers. Um, they motion in. Good crack replace now. And you'll see right away, you know, this is kind of that big box that we were talking about. And you can draw that, that 45 there. And he does a good job of pressing a little bit of warp pipe and then finding his outside lane of traffic. Again, just all about the leverage and keeping the ball on the correct shoulder is a huge, huge deal. And, and again, defining that as, hey, that's our outside lane, uh, I think has been really beneficial for our guys. So again, some good, some bad, some ugly, and then how to, how to practice that. We'll get into the other drill now. Um, I don't see anything. Oh, there's a, if there's anything in the chat, you know, peek at that or, or coach like you did interrupt, um, and we'll pause to cover that stuff. But the warp pipe banana here, this is the drill setup. You know, we don't use any cones for this one. Um, between the numbers is our warp pipe as, as we set it up on the field. And obviously, this is where you're going to get your J-path. We tell the ball carriers here now, the blue guy on this, that, hey, you're just pretend like you're running a toss. And I want those guys to turn it up before it gets 10 yards outside of us so they're not running to infinity to the sideline and screwing up the drill. Um, the uh, coaching points for this one are now. Pad level, same thing, hunt position, got to move forward first. A uh, common mistake is where those guys will want to swing outside first. You've got to press downhill, hence the warp pipe. You have to enter that thing first on this tackling path and your approach angle. It's got to press downhill first and foremost. Don't invert the banana. You'll see guys want to swing this thing outside first. It's a recipe for disaster. Um, the only reason I was a decent college player is because I could figure this path out and just went and knifed guys out all the time because I dang sure wasn't making a living, making any interceptions. Um, and then tracking the near hook, hip, and this one is all gas, no brakes. The outside lane traffic, you can see those guys come to balance a little bit. But this one, we do not want guys slowing down one bit on this thing. Mistakes, you know, again, they don't get straight downhill. They widen immediately. They invert the banana, or they perceive this tackle as a one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care who you are or where you're at on the field. When you press downhill and you chase a guy inside out, we count the sideline as somebody else. So I want guys to be really, really aggressive on this one. If you are good at this and can hone this craft, it doesn't matter if your corner lost leverage or anything like that. The ball will eventually get to the sideline, and that is our final defender. Um, you know, some guys will ask me on this, well, guys, do you spill it or you box or this or that? To me, it's, it, the scheme doesn't matter of how you're fitting the box. Yeah, there's two big angles, and it's that outside lane of traffic or this one that are, are going to get you to the football. And then the other mistake that you see is they, they press it too far downhill and don't start to banana it right away, and then they'll end up looping back to try and get the ball here. That was obviously a too, too aggressive of a press on this. Variations, you know, you can just work the banana part of it, take the warp pipe out of it just to get those guys to run off the back hip. Or I, I got one clip on here at the, at the very end. You know, when, when apex players are, are running out to a smoke screen or a perimeter deal, hey, they got to get lateral through a warp pipe first, and then they'll banana that back hip still as this ball's getting vertical down the field. You know, we don't want to overrun that thing and have that dude cut back again. You know, that's a philosophy. Some guys may differ on that, and that's fine. Um, but that's, that's one of the other variations that we'll use on this. So, again, we just jump out. You won't see any cones out here. We're just going to get rolling right away. And, and here's a good rep. This is a, a true freshman running this. And you see, you know, 
it should be a palm touch. So his palm should be facing forward when he tags off that hip. And the really, really aggressive angles, those guys got to pull up just a little bit right at the tail end of it. They kind of got to abort to avoid good contact. That's the really good one that you want to see. So like as he goes here, this is solid. I would give this a, a B plus, A minus. You know, he's in a good hunt position at the finish. If a guy's got a really, really aggressive where he's going to be able to bite the belt and really put a thud on that, on that near hip that he's tracking, um, you know, he's got to kind of pull up to avoid contact at the tail end of this. Again, we're doing a lot of these uh, tackle angles without any contact. Here he is again with a good aggressive angle. Again, probably a B plus. He, he, he's rolling off a bag, uh, back ankle there and Gator rolling that thing if it's live. Here he is now, the very next one that he's up, same kid, takes a little bit wider path. He doesn't press that the same. So he doesn't, it's a little difference, but again, I want those guys pressing vertical first. Compared to that clip that we just watched, he didn't press this one. It was actually about a half step short, and he started to wind it sooner. Tight end, no, this isn't an elite back that he's running on. This is one of our tight ends, and he gets it cut back on. So we don't want that ever to happen. I say if you get cut back on in practice, that's a cardinal sin. So don't want to see it. And this is another really bad rep of a guy that's, again, he's exaggerating that. He's pressing it too vertical, and now he's going to be looping back, and there's obviously way too much space there. But this is a player, uh, I mean, he was a walk-on. He's kind of that traditional story. He's a hard worker. He got a ton better as we kept going through this stuff because he started to figure out, hey, what he was capable of doing and what he wasn't capable of doing. So I think there's a lot of benefit to doing this, no contact, and, uh, and let it rip. So here we're going to watch the, the Will Backer as this one progresses. So you'll see him. He does the – he inverts his banana as this QB starts to scramble on this rep. So just keep an eye on him. And right now I'm going to pause that film. See him cross over run. Like he's going to run this way. That's – and, again, he's not even in the pocket. He's already got leverage on this quarterback. Attack downhill. Your warp fight varies in depth, right? Everybody's a little bit different there. Press this thing downhill. Go attack this and go. Gets his butt cut back on, and we're thankful that uh, that dude's going to be playing on Sundays, the kid that just stripped him, um, that he was there for us. But, again, an example of a bad rep. Told you guys I was going to put all of it on here. Uh, I believe this one we're looking at the boundary safety, okay, as he's coming down. So you see him at the top of this thing. He's starting to float wide right away. He's taking a 45-degree a angle, and it's way too early in the development of the play. He should be pressing this on a long warp pipe and then banana this thing later than he does here. So you see him float. He makes a tackle now, but not the way I want that done. Okay, so I want that space taken out now. Go attack downhill to get to the ball, and then you can press that inside out. Trust the sideline, it's your friend. And this, once you gain confidence in this angle, you know, the, uh, you can get anywhere you need to go. So, again, looking at the boundary safety here, he's actually in a fit. He's in the, he's in the B gap. We're stunting this. So, he's a little slow. We're talking scheme and quarters. Don't like his tempo into this play. But I love the banana here. So, this ends up being a four-yard gain because he's so dang slow getting downhill and getting rolling. But we'll watch this one. I got this one clipped up from the end zone. So, I just love how he presses this thing vertical. I mean, he takes about four or five steps vertical and then starts to go. And then, you know, when you're studying backs, we talk about tackling game plans every week. There's certain backs where we talk, hey, it's got to be shorter this week. You got to press it wider earlier. This kid's a scat back. Number 19, I don't know his name from Memphis, is a freaking dude. You know, we got to respect him a little bit more. Um, but, you know, again, the, the, one of the beneficial byproducts of, of doing this stuff is, is you name all those babies and, uh, and you can talk about them. So this is a great one. We'll go at the top of the screen, the corner. Okay, so it's a crack replace. He identifies this screen early, and he does a great job of pulling his trigger to press this thing downhill right away. Pulls his gun, a little bit of a banana at the tail end, and then is able to make really nice contact on the dude. So, and obviously that on a screen, that dude's teed up, but you see the path to the football. You do that with a lot of confidence, and good things will happen. So right here, looking into the boundary safety again, Got two more clips for you guys here. He's going to get a crack where he, he suck, his eyes suck here. He doesn't identify the crack worth the darn. Um, but he ends up getting to it a little bit late. So he peaks one, which he shouldn't do on the crack. He should run run the warp pipe and get ready to, to banana this thing. But he ends up picking it up 
at the tail end of it. But you see him press down right away. He missed a couple tackles early in the year because he floated wide. But you see as, as he's about to cross right uh, the 20 emblem on the field there, he presses that down for three steps and then starts to go, and he's able to make a confident tackle there at the tail end of that. Um, the last clip I, I have on here for you guys is this last one. This is just that variation. You watch number four. He's, he got picked up with the Panthers. Um, actually, just was FaceTime with him today. He's, he's a special player. Uh, watch now as this, again, a, a hitch, a smoke train, anything to the perimeter. You're going to want to get flat right away first. And then making sure if that dude turns it up field, that now you're going to start tracking his low hip or his back hip as it goes. So I'll let this play. He gets himself there. He doesn't finish it. I always made fun of him. He had the cleanest jersey for a defender out of anybody I'd ever seen. Um, but good player nonetheless. Uh, I saw a chat, one pop up there. Let me peek at this question. Closing distance, are you teaching a similar technique like the scooch when doing recognition at all? Now, when we're closing distance and, and the outside lane of traffic, um, I want those guys running. Uh, a lot of times it's a crossover run and then they'll end up getting into a more of a scallop or scooch at the finish. They, with the outside lane of traffic, you do have to come to balance a little bit. We, we try to eliminate the term breakdown or shimmy or any of that stuff. Uh, big fan of coach Chris, Chris, I asked, studied a lot of his approach angle stuff for a long time. Um, I just, I think it makes guys a little bit hesitant. I err on the other side of the spectrum of, of being attack mode, attack mode, attack mode. And if your approach is right, you can be aggressive. And if you miss, you're going to take some shrapnel with you. And then your pursuit's got to get there too. So if your pursuit's not there, you got a, you got a lot more issues. So hopefully that answered that. Um, if other guys have questions, otherwise that's all I had. Hopefully we're playing ball here soon. And again, thanks, Drew and Coach Gum for having me on tonight. Um, look forward to a spotted cow hopefully soon. <laughs>